At this time, I'd like to recognize the chairman of the full committee, Mr. Mica. Well, first of all, I have to thank uh, you, Mr. Denham, uh, for your leadership and uh, for um, not just on this, not just on this uh, issue and the outrageous matter that's before us, but uh, uh, from the very beginning when I had to select someone to chair this subcommittee that oversees public buildings, uh, I think we're, the country was fortunate to have you and your experience and leadership. And uh, I think when we met, our first assignment was to pick up uh, what we had discussed we would do before you got here in the minority. And we published this report. This report uh, basically is, it was October, ironically, of 2010, the same time that they were spending uh, money on their uh, GSA out lavish conventions. But this report is entitled, the Federal Government Must Stop Sitting on Its Assets. Uh, it's online, and I hope you all get a chance to read it. The first part starts right out with GSA. And the abuse of not just millions of dollars in a convention junket, but billions of dollars in waste. Uh, th this was our primer. and. I couldn't have had a better partner than Mr. Denham, who the, one of the very first hearings this committee did, and I asked him to help lead, was in the vacant annex building next to the post office, vacant for almost 15 years. Between that and the old post office, losing $6 million a year. Put this in perspective. Here again, I reference this uh, this document. So this isn't a Johnny come lately hearing or attempt to get an agency under control. We held the first hearing in that empty building. It was 32 degrees outside, 38 degrees inside. The picture you can see here are the GSA bureaucrats with their coats on because we brought them down to the empty building to try to get the, uh, a six million dollar a year loss. Again, two blocks from the White House, a federal building. There's the, the empty building that uh, uh, we held the hearing in and get it turned around uh, and make it a productive property. The Federal General Services Administration is our government's landlord. It's appalling to, to see the the, the wasteful spending, of course, on this co uh, conference, and Mr. Denham will outline not just this conference, he's going to talk about trips to Hawaii, Atlanta, junkets to the South Pacific, uh, California, Atlanta, Hawaii, Guam, Sa Saipan, uh, all at taxpayer ex expense. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, the billions that are lost. Uh, <laughs> Uh, again, by having the federal government's primary uh, landlord agency out of control uh, and not operating as it should in and making these assets perform for the public is what's outrageous. You know, we, we smelled a rat and we, we asked for data because if you look at the budget of, uh, and the expenditures uh, for the public uh, buildings commissioner, they went from $2.9 million in 2007 to $9 million. That's a, what, two, three hundred percent increase? So we started asking for data. We got stonewalled time and time again. Mr. Denham asked at almost every hearing. You heard him say, uh, we requested information and data. Uh, what we got instead, this is what we got instead, folks. Just a few pages of the top numbers. You can, anyone can see now why they didn't want to disclose what was going on. Uh, Ms. Norton said, and I agree, we have thousands of people who work for the federal government who work day in and day out and do a good job. This is not an example of the average performance of our federal employees. 
We have some incredible men and women. We're going to hear from one of them today, Susan Britta. She worked on this committee. It, when you see the timeline of what took place, you see a timeline of cover-up, a, a timeline of, de, of deceit, a timeline of keeping Congress in the dark on what was going on. And you see one woman who stood up. This conference was held in what, October 10th in, in Las Vegas. In November, she requested uh, the uh, IG, the Office of Inspector General, look into this matter. You see, yesterday, and we don't, our committee has legislative oversight and responsibility for public hearings, and I, we coordinated this very well with Mr. Isaac, because he has broader jurisdiction over the White House and others that we don't have. And you saw yesterday, uh, and in the timeline, that the White House knew about this in June of, uh, of 2011. That's great for the President and others to, to uh, condemn the action in the last week or two. They've known for uh, nearly a year of what was going on. And, and <laughs> again, our former staffer not only um, went to the IG on this, but other uh, matters, and that's detailed. And I'll submit, submit this list for the record, Mr. Chairman, without objection. You know, it's kind of upsetting in a way, and it should be upsetting to the American people that this has all been revealed. And it would eventually, maybe it wouldn't have been revealed. It probably could have all been swept under the table, but for one person who stood up, and I want to hear from her today. I hope they haven't intimidated her. I hope uh, that she feels secure, uh, and I hope that she re realizes that we recognize her patriotism in stepping forward and again, uh, revealing what was going on. Because otherwise, we might not have known. We would have been, we would have been handed uh, 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 one sheet and said, uh, pay, don't, don't pay attention. Uh, when I announced that I was going to do hearings on this, uh, I was pretty saddened by the comments of the majority leader of the U.S. Senate. He, he said, Micah needs to get a life. Well, I want to tell him and others that I have a life, and that's dedicated to uncovering waste and inefficiency in uh, federal government and bringing business type uh, common sense practices uh, to whether it's GSA or other federal agencies. So we were stonewalled, we were uh, delayed, we were not given information, but the, the American people need to know that this is just the tip of the iceberg and they'll hear much more about uh, what's going on and what needs to be done to reform this agency so it, uh, or to replace it. Mr. Denham and I had a discussion last night. Maybe it's time to look at a, a total replacement. How many of you out there, how many of you out there, if you have property, would turn it over to the federal government to manage for you? I ask you that question. Not very many of you. And that if you see the wasteful overhead and cost and what takes place when you're on the taxpayer's uh, dime, uh, it's even more offensive. So with that, again, I thank Ms. Norton for her cooperation, Mr. Denham for his leadership, and other members for being with us today.